Good afternoon. In my capacity as Provost of Trinity College and current Chair of the Irish Universities Association, I'm delighted to welcome you all to this important and timely debate on the future of Irish higher education and research. The debate is organised by the Irish Universities Association, the IUA, the Union of Students in Ireland, USI, the Technological Higher Education Association, THEA, and the Royal Irish Academy, the RIA. And they're coming together underlines the deep shared concern about higher education and research in Ireland. Last Thursday, USI, THEA, and the IUA made a joint statement calling for all political parties to commit to invest in higher education to prevent Ireland losing ground against international competitors, warning that state funding per student in Ireland at third level is now 40% less than it was a decade ago. Students, academics and researchers are at one on this issue. There's a crisis. The crisis was spelled out in the Castles report four years ago. A number of recommendations were made which have not been acted on. We're sitting on a time bomb. And when I say we, I don't just mean the higher education sector, I mean we, the country. It depends on cutting edge research and groundbreaking innovation. The country and our economic prosperity depends on an educated and talented workforce. As we enter a period of uh, huge growth in the student population, our universities are being overtaken in the global rankings by institutions around the world with better public funding. The time to act is now. We have the resources but do we have the political leadership? Higher education funding should be an electoral priority for all political parties. Unfortunately, I haven't seen it prioritised in manifestos or debates so far. However, the organisers of today's event are helping to inject the necessary urgency into the issue, and I thank them. And I thank most warmly the representatives of political parties here today. I know how hard pressed you are and how many other campaign issues are needful of your attention. We welcome Minister Mary Mitchell O'Connor, TD Fine Gael, Thomas Byrne, TD Fianna Fáil, Dunica O'Leary, TD Sinn Féin, Richard Boyd Barrett, TD People Before Profit, Senator Ivana Bacic, Labour, Angus Omwelong, Social Democrats, and Councillor Nasa Hurrigan, Green Party. To convene the debate, we welcome Shane Coleman, presenter of News Talk's flagship breakfast programme and regular contributor to the Irish Independent and Sunday Independent. Previously, political editor and business editor of the Sunday Tribune, he's the author of four best selling books on Irish politics and is a graduate of Trinity College and we're del delighted to welcome him back here today to host this debate. Shane. So by all means, uh, let's have you know, forceful uh, points, forceful debate, but let's be polite and respectful uh, of, of our speakers. Okay, we are going to start by asking each of our speakers uh, just to give us a one minute, and I will be strict about one minute, a quick one minute uh, address, uh, just to, I suppose, set out their party's vision on the, uh, the future of education and research. So could I start off by saying congratulations, heartfelt congratulations to the IOA, TIA, USI and the RIA. Um, when I was involved in the student movement not so long ago, the idea that those four organizations could get together to agree on anything was fairly remarkable. Uh, and the fact that you've managed to come together in such a clear uh, manifesto and vision for higher education is remarkable. So congratulations on that and indeed thank you for the invitation. Um, education and higher education in particular is one of the great success stories of Ireland. Um, but that 
is due more so to, I think, the abiding affection and respect that the Irish people have for education than any coherent funding system that has been established to date. We, despite all of that, have one of the highest participation rates in the world, um, which is fantastic, but when we have 99% of young people in one Dublin postcode attending HE and around 15% in another, there's clearly a problem. I believe education is a right, and that includes higher education. And I believe that we need to fund higher education so that it is the public good that it is in reality. As the student population surges in particular over the next 10 years, we really do need to get to grips with this. There is a wave coming and continuing as we do now uh, where, um, as Professor Prendergast said, uh, we've lost 40% of funding per student over the last 10 years. Continuing that way is a recipe for disaster. I think it's fair to say that the last four years have been uh, a period lost. Uh, I'm sure the Minister will disagree, but in my view that is the case in relation to higher education. Uh, we have lost time. The process that was started in relation to castles and the options that were put forward there at that point, I think a consensus has to some greater or lesser extent emerged between organisations such as the USI and the UA that whatever funding source you produce, ultimately third level needs to be funded adequately. It is of crucial importance to obviously everyone who attends and works in uh, the university and third level sector, but it is of crucial strategic importance to Ireland as a whole and to our economy. Uh, it contributes about nine billion uh, to the Irish economy uh, per annum. In my view, um, the debate in relation to an income contingent loan, I think we have moved on from that. I think it's been well established that that's not sustainable uh, in, in this uh, for Ireland. Uh, we believe in publicly funded education, but we also believe it's not just enough to say that, we are committed to getting rid of third level fees. It is also necessary, above and beyond that, to commit to substantially additional funding. Okay. We are committing to that in a manifesto of 117 additional minutes. And it's always been my firm and passionate belief as a Trinity Senator, also as a former Students' Union activist 30 years ago in the buttery, Shane, alongside uh, uh, my colleagues then, uh, and as a parent indeed, uh, and an educator myself, it's been my firm and passionate belief, as it is for Labour, that education should be free from cradle to grave, based on universal access paid for indirectly through taxation. It's a fundamental principle of socialism and it's what we stand for and for that reason when I spoke previously about the Castles report I spoke very strongly in favour of option one increase state funding do not re in, do not introduce student loan systems because we know that creates further disadvantage for students and we know it saddles graduates with huge debt we need to ensure adequate funding I know it's a crisis the Prof spoke about that and we know also that current models do not work the current government has kicked the can down the road and we're seeing with the recent human capital initiative a really worrying development towards uh, a move towards funding almost for uh, instrumentalizing third level uh, we're going to see destruction of arts and humanities sector by stealth if that road is continued we okay. have to future proof our education at third level and ensure creative sectors arts humanities as well as stem are, are seriously and adequately invested in okay thank you, thank you for you. that Ivana next up is uh, councillor NASA Harrigan a Green Party candidate in Dublin Central NASA Thank you very much for ha having me. Um, I, I suppose our vision for um, higher education in Ireland is one around access, diversity and quality. Um, in our last pre-budget submission, which was just before Christmas, we committed to 300 million in funding for, for the sector. Um, I'm a, a former lecturer myself and it's, it's something that I'm quite passionate about. For us, access, we know that already around 20 to 25% of students um, are, are uh, attending university through some kind of access or supported course. We know that issues around transport um, affect those choices now. Issues around housing affect those choices now. Um, we also know that the, na the nature of our leaving cert affects those choices. Um, we would like to see more care taken around issues of diversity. Um, we were pledging 27 million towards supporting um, students with disabilities, um, students that have learning challenges to access education. I'm the parent of a disabled child and I can tell you that that journey doesn't start in sixth year. That journey starts in first class, in, in junior infants. You, you start to um, engage with students and bring them through and give them the skills and the technology and the access to really engage with third level. And then finally, uh, uh, I'm very interested in the issue of quality. So, um, not only in terms of access to staff, 
Um, I'm, uh, we would have concerns around the gig economy and the use of part-time staff that aren't accessing proper contracts. Um, also, the use of PhD students in teaching. Um, and finally, infrastructure. We pledged 100 million towards infrastructure. So that's your buildings, your facilities, what you're using in your labs. Those things are all aspects. Oh, sorry, I'm going to start. I'm, I'm, I hope that's <laughs> yeah, no, 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 okay, you can, okay, thanks, Nasa. You're very good. Um, next up is the uh, Minister of State's Department of Education with special responsibility for higher education, of course, uh, Fine Gael candidate, uh, outgoing TD from Dunlera, uh, Mary Mitchell. -Lopin. So thanks very much, and I suppose I'm very honoured to have been the first minister in charge of higher education ever, sitting at the cabinet table and working towards ensuring that there was funding, adequate funding, and of course, no matter what funding we get at the cabinet table, every department wants more. I just want to say though, and I want to put it on the table now, that there is 1.88 billion euro spent on higher education, on tertiary education. And it's really important also to say that we have increased funding since 2016 by 350 million. They are real figures, I never hear them quoted, and the 1.88 billion euro is a bigger department, a bigger spend in higher education than, say, for example, in the Department of Justice, in the Department for Rural Affairs, in the Department for, for uh, Josepha Madigan's. Right, okay. Your, your time is up. Is my time uh, up? You can finish your point. Oh, okay, I so I'm the recipient of a third level education. I come from a village where nobody hardly ever got a, an education. I believe to my core that education is important. I believe it's really important working with students and they have been at the epicentre of what I have done. And my last point is that I, I recently heard Michael Bloomberg in Dublin Castle and he was asked about the future of Ireland and the future of Ireland, he said, give three answers, education, education, education. I've been there since I was 19, 20 years of age when I started as a teacher and I'm so proud to be sitting here. I'll answer any questions that you ask me now in okay. the next half hour. Okay. State granting for horses, 6,915 euro per year, state grant for per student, 4,386. Uh, that's how seriously successive governments uh, take you as students and third level uh, education. Uh, another shocking fact, numbers going to university in Dublin 4, 95%. Numbers going to university in Dublin 17, 19%. Uh, that's the consequence of slashing funding by 40%, in the case of TCD, by 50%, of effectively uh, cutting uh, grants, uh, increasing registration fees, inhibiting access for huge numbers of students uh, to third level education, increasingly forcing the higher education sector to depend on philanthropy, charity uh, from billionaires uh, and uh, corporations essentially taking over third level education. That is absolutely not acceptable. We need to abolish all college fees. We need to increase the grants. We need to increase per capita funding and funding to all the universities uh, to restore these things. Cost at least 436 million. Where do we get it? Currently, multinational corporations get 700 million a year in, in tax loopholes for research and development. I say don't give it to Google and Facebook. Take 430 million at least of those uh, tax giveaways to big corporations, put it into our universities, put it into our students, and treat students better than okay. horses. Okay, uh, thank you indeed. Okay, let's, um, let's try and tease out some of those issues. There is a chance for you guys to uh, ask questions from the floor. We will have some roving mics, but I, I'm going to kick off with a question. Let's start with, I think the Provost uh, called it the, the sitting time bomb, uh, the, uh, the funding issue in third level. Uh, Minister, I might start with you first. Look, you, you, you correctly pointed out the increase. 1.88 billion euro. And, and, and it has yeah, increased no, by 350 you, million. Let me ask the I know, but nobody ever quotes that, well, or nobody you, ever it. acknowledges it. I do, but nobody listens. Okay. Here's another, here's another figure for you, another fact. Direct what? state funding per student, 
to universities and institute of technologies is 40% less than it was a decade ago. Yeah, but let's just go back. There is more of an investment in education now than ever before in this state, since the foundation of state. Of course I acknowledge that we must continue, but we can have all the drama we like, but we need to know where is the money coming from and where are we going to cut if we're going to put more money into higher education. So if I can just clarify, I suppose that doesn't sound exactly right, but what I'm really saying is the money has to be found from somewhere. There will be, our, our manifesto says, yes, we will, we will keep the registration fee. The Taoiseach and I have been on record before any of the other parties stating that we will not allow a student, uh, student loans. And I absolutely agree now that we must find the money within the whole revenue, within taxation to pay for third level no, education. No loans. Cassell's is, is I dead, have is said it? that, Shane, so often. Okay. Cassell's at the moment, and it's all right people quoting Cassell's and putting it into sentences, well, but you, not you one of them, up. not one of them knows mentioned twice here, including the provost. We didn't kick it down the, the uh, road. I mean, we actually asked, you did kick sorry, it. I beg your pardon now, Shane, give me a chance. We asked the Inaractus Committee cross party to come up with a solution. They didn't. They actually kicked it back to us. Shana's we've now sent correct. it. That's no, no. We've se sorry now. Uh, to, uh, we've now point sent point. it to Europe to look at it. And let me tell you, it's not just all about higher education. It's about further education. It's yeah. about apprenticeships. It's about you've long line. Report about a report, no, basically. no. Sorry. They're going to give us, tell us how we need to invest because Shane. No parent and no student will thank me if we make a wrong decision now. Okay. We have said well, what we won't we'll do. We will continue to okay. invest like we've done Donica. for 350 million for the last number okay, of years. I just want to deal with that point in relation to the education committee. That was referred to an education committee. I wasn't on the committee at the time. My colleague, Debbie Byrne now, and I suppose, is there anyone else who's on the Iraq Education Committee? I don't see anyone now. Kathleen Punch is yeah, on No, it. sorry, just present Sinn here. Sinn Féin were represented Minister, on it. Present, present here. The point is, it was you referred it to Europe, and it was you that decided not to. Yeah, but, the, but, but the minister is right. You guys in the, in the committee, you all no, sat no, in No, 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 that's not, yeah. no, like, I mean, different parties have very clear opinions, right? And our position is that we're against student or income contingent loan systems. We want to abolish third level fees and we want to spend on it publicly. But whatever, and, and it, it, at the how? core of Cassell's, there was three options mm. and it was whatever option you choose, there is a shortfall in funding. And the minister can't abdicate responsibility for whatever avenue of government takes uh, to raise that, in, that revenue that is necessary. Yeah. You can't abdicate responsibility for the fact that the income First being coming. invested, the money being invested in the system, did not increase. Okay, Havana, 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 well, Havana, can I just say this? I mean, Shane, when you say Castles is dead, you're talking about one option in Castles, and there were three, and the first option is to increase state funding. I, I, think, we all so know, I, think, I think we all know which but one I know, Peter Castells preferred. I know what you mean. I think the, Sorry, the, we're, I yes, think the, we're joined, I should say, we're just joined by Thomas oh. Byrne, a Fianna Fáil spokesperson. No, no, no. You know, no, I, you know, I, I know you're all, you've got a lot in your plate, so thank you for joining us. Ivana, it's continue. always lovely to be a former student on the panel. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> um, Tommy did law, yeah, yeah. did law here. Yeah. Um, well, you're looking well, Ivana. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mary. Um, uh, anyway, uh, apart from that digression, just to say that there is, there is though a disconnection between the stated aims of those parties which say they want to see more state investment in, in higher education and yet at the same time want to provide enormous f money by way of tax cuts. And Brendan Howland, the leader of Labour, made this <coughs> point very clearly in the debate last night. If we want to see better investment, more investment in public services, including education, we have to ensure a broad enough tax base to do it. We've done the costings. Fine Gael's tax giveaways that they're promising in their current manifesto would cost eight, over eight billion mm. over five years. Fianna Fáil and Sinn Féin, about five billion, because they're making promises that are unsustainable if, we're going to, if we want to see the sort of level of state investment in third level education that we all say we want to see, that is so crucial if we want to actually challenge and tackle our staff-student okay. ratio and include the great funding for our access programmes, like the Trinity Access Programme, which has done so okay. much to increase in, diversity. Uh, I want to bring in Nasa Harrigan on this. Nasa, your, your point. Yeah, well, look, I, I do think that there is an 
issue there about, about basically how, how much we're spending. The a EU average is around 5% and we're well below that. So I, I do think that we need to cut the spend. We are looking at things like broadening the tax base in terms of the site value tax, windfall on industrial rezoning of lands. That would provide extra funds within the Exchequer. We do not support any type, type of tax breaks where we have such shortfalls in funding for basic services like healthcare, like disability services, and certainly like education. Okay, Angus, Angus and Welland, uh, Social Democrats. Yeah, <coughs> I think it's important to remember that uh, for all that Minister Mitchell O'Connor talks about I increasing, increasing budget slightly, we're working from an, an extremely slashed base that higher education has never really had a predictable funding base, certainly since we've gone to mass education. So we have to remember that these are political choices. The decision to have higher education so badly underfunded as it is now is a political choice. Other political choices, like Richard made, 80 million a year on the horse and greyhound racing fund. These are things that we're spending money on instead of on higher education, which is, as I said before, the great success story of Ireland. Once the United Kingdom leaves the European Union in a couple of days, Ireland will have the highest tuition fees in Europe, in the European Union. That's critical that okay. we know that, that that's where we are. And that, and, uh, sorry, just, to, just to finish there, just, just to remember that that yeah. is a political choice and that is a legacy that the Minister Mitchell O'Connor is proposing to do nothing to address. Okay, Richard Boyd Barrett, I'll, I'll let you come in. Okay, yeah, come I mean, listen, as UCD yeah. student, I was on protests uh, pre-2008 over uh, threatened fees, talks about loans, and all the rest of it. And then in 2008, uh, higher education, among others, uh, took a battering, first from Fianna Fáil and the Greens, and then subsequently was ratcheted up uh, registration fees. To be fair, fees we were in a crisis. By Fine Gael. I mean, the idea you could continue sorry, spending I, I, cut, it's Cutting possible. higher education is cutting off your nose to spite your face. Yeah. It's destroying your future when you need to invest uh, in your uh, future. Uh, can we afford it? I refer to what I said earlier on, and people really need to look at this. You see, what's never talked about is tax breaks. They always talk about expenditure at the budget. They never talk about tax breaks. And I want to repeat, 700 million euro and rising is given in research and development tax breaks overwhelmingly benefiting about 10 companies. Now that's in addition to all sorts of other tax loopholes they enjoy to pay 0 and 1% tax. Now I say, instead of giving research and development state funding of, of, to the tune of 700 okay. million to we'll, a small we'll number of multinationals, yeah. give it to third level students and third level education. Okay, Thomas Byrne, Fianna Fáil. Uh, first of all, I just apologise for being late. Uh, just, just got delayed on the way, apologies for that. Uh, and I'm really glad to see an education debate so full mm. uh, because education hasn't featured uh, on the campaign trail so yeah. far. Mm. Uh, it hasn't featured in any of the debates <laughs> on TV or in the media as far as I know. Uh, and in fact, an opinion poll shows a very small proportion of people interested. And I think that that's a pity. Uh, and I think it's not quite as bad as that, it's just people are prioritising obviously. It hasn't got a mention in either of the TV debates. No. I think I'm right in saying so far. Yeah, I think that's mention. correct. Now, I would say people, when people prioritise, of course they prioritise housing and health. But I mean, housing and health are relevant to, to students as well, particularly the housing crisis. Um, look, what, what we think is needed in, in education now is just a complete step change, particularly in relation to third level. A complete step change. That's why last summer, uh, my leader, when he spoke to the IUA, he proposed a new Department of Higher Education. Because the Minister for Education going to the budget negotiations uh, is fighting for his budget for schools, and obviously primary schools in particular have huge political resonance and huge political clout, uh, and second level as well. Okay. But higher education needs that extra voice okay. around I'll, the cabinet table. And actually, well, actually, while no, we're on I'll that... I'll just say that, but it was, it, I wasn't here no, for we, the question... No, we'll we come back to that a little bit later, No, because yeah. I know you, have a, you do have a proposal on that. Uh, Minister, just very well, quickly... I, do you want me to answer the question that they all answer? Which okay, was, go on, yeah, which, yeah. What was the exact question? You answer the question <laughs> you want to answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, I wasn't but no, go on, fair enough. But what was the question, because I wasn't in when you asked Actually, that's a fair point. I should actually point out the question. It was that shortfall, 40% less we're spending now than we were in 2008 okay. per, per student. Well, what we propose to do, and it's a major item in our budget, and by the way, our taxation plans are about 1.3 billion, and much lower than, than Ivana suggested. Um, but what we've proposed, actually, it's one of the biggest points in our budget, is 100 million extra year cumulative uh, into higher education, which is about what the Castles Report is recommending. And I think when we talk about the Castles Report, everyone talks about the three options, uh, and, and they are important, and they have to be discussed, and we can have any debate you want about them, but each of them requires a significant boost uh, from, from the state as well, each one of them. And we are proposing a hugely significant boost uh, in funding, way above uh, what has been given over the last okay. three years, and oh, about what Castles proposes. But the other thing as well about Castles, and we talk about this, there's a lot of other things in Castles okay, as well. I like do want to move on. Postgraduate post grants, student grants, uh, and a range of other items as well uh, that, that tend to be ignored, but that are crucially important as Minister, well. Minister, very, very quickly. 
you wanted to make a point? Well, I, I was going to make the point about your uh, minister that you wanted to appoint full, full capacity. We are going to come back to that a little okay. later. So, let's so I'll, again, OK, just talking about Cassell's report, I mean, everyone talks about it. It's like the Bible, but nobody has read it. And what the Cassell's report actually... I think some of us have read it. Well, uh, well hold on. Well, how many people extra are we talking about employing? How, what are we going to pay? And there's one piece that's left out of the Cassell's report, and that is the earnings that come in under international students, which is 400 million euro every year. That's not counted in on the revenue base for third level and higher education. Okay. So I would say, actually, you know, let's see what comes back from Europe. We'll get a fuller picture of what's happening. We and we also right need now, to right. think about what's happening, okay, folks, Minister, for you students, you. for the future of just, jobs. Just and that's before, what we're looking just at. Just before I, I go to, to questions from the audience, I just want to ask you about two really quick questions. And I really, literally want yes or no answers uh, to the question. Um, I'll start, I'll, I'll start uh, with yourself, Angus. Is there an underfunding issue? Do you accept it in, in, in third level? And student loans, yes or no? Yes, no. OK. <laughs> yes, it? no. Yes, Nasa? no. OK, yes, Duncan, no. Ivana? Yes, no. Massive underfunding and student loans with the thin end of the wedge. Michael okay. Martin said that he would consider it there no, recently well, at a no. debate, <laughs> and the students' union president it's, is actually nodding her head because we a, know he, he it, said it's not, that. It's not in our manifesto. But what Michael Martin proposed before was uh, that loans uh, could come in maybe for, for a little for while as an alternative to loans you're already taking out from banks. Okay. Uh, but that's not something that's in our mind. Absolutely. Absolutely. A red line for me, no loans ever for students. Okay. And is, is I believe that issue? we need more money. Of course is we that, do. In, in, all, in all, all, of course we do. We, the Taoiseach and I have said it so often, and you have that. heard it. You have what heard you it, is, Thomas. Well, let, let the minister answer. Yes, is there Thomas, an underfunding issue? We need more investment, absolutely, in every sector of education be it preschools, so primary, there is, there is secondary. There is, of course, and I want to get more okay. money into what the, the system. What the said is that there's no UK-style loans. But we have to do it prudently. Loans okay. because that's, nobody it, has proposed it that. It does strike me, listening to you all, that you all agree about there's a problem. But coming <coughs> up with actually solutions on how this is going to be funded, I think it's slightly we're, different. We're I'm not I'll sure answer I've heard that. No, I think I'll answer that, that if you okay, give well, me time. We might, have we heard might, we might come back to that. I do want to go out to the audience. Uh, we have uh, Vish uh, Gain, DCU master student, who has a question. Vish, your, your question, please. Um, hi, my name is Vish, and I'm a student of journalism from DCU. And um, first of all, I'm glad that all of us agree that student funding has reduced, or at least uh, those not responsible <coughs> for it agree that student funding has reduced over time. Um, so my question is that uh, at, simultaneously, along with the, with, with the reduction in, in the funding, there has also been an increase in the demand for higher education in Ireland from both Irish students as well as international students, such as myself. So my question is, how will you, and this is addressed to all the party members, how will your party um, increase the capacity of the Irish edu education, higher, higher education system uh, in order to ensure that the 40,000 additional students over the next 10 years will be accommodated? Okay. I'm not going to come to everyone on this question because we'll be here uh, all night if we, if we go to every, every speaker on every question, but I will bring people in equally. And by the way, uh, we got loads and loads of questions in, so we have filtered through them and we will come to as many of them as we can. Uh, Richard Boybart, do you want to take that first? Yeah, well, we have to plan. It's called planning. You don't leave it to the market. You plan, you look at the demographics, uh, and you ensure <coughs> that you invest in providing the capacity. Um, so that, that's basically the answer. It's worth just adding to that. Uh, yeah, but there's a bit more than planning to it now. You, you, it needs money. You might plan. Yes, you resources. Know. You absolutely Where need resources. They? And uh, I think what we need to recognise is that we have chronically low levels of investment compared to our European counterparts in public services and education generally. And we need to bring the level of investment and spending in education up to EU average levels. We are almost 20% below in public okay. expenditure than the rest of Europe. That's why education is underfunded. That's why we've got a housing problem. Uh, that's why we've got a health problem. So let's just do what most other countries in Europe do as a minimum. OK, Ivana. Well, Ivana. thank you for the question, Vish. And I think it's true. Of course, we need to bring higher education funding up to European levels. 
But last night at, in the leaders' debate, Brendan Howland was the only party leader who made clear that to do that, we also need to ensure we have a sufficient tax base to fund higher education, as, as, funding edu as we should be funding education at all levels, including preschool. And I've just come from the Labour Manifesto launch, and at that launch we made clear our priority is investment in public services, not giving tax breaks, not, taking, not uh, decreasing the taxes that people pay, but ensuring that we have adequate investment in public services, housing, health and education. And and that's the way to ensure that we have capacity for increasing student numbers. We have seen a big increase in student numbers. It's a, it's a big success story for Ireland. Others have talked about it. Our participation rates at third level are yeah, high. Are. But we've seen funding reduce commensurately with the result that that has affected our staff-student ratio. And we need to see better funding in place and a sustained commitment to funding to ensure that we can okay. continue to attract students. Irish Research Council has done incredible things with a small budget, for example, in attracting research grants in. So that okay. we need to see more Havana, funding there. Uh, Minister, I'm going to bring okay. you in then, and then I'm going to so move I, on to another question. I will bring so the other speakers in. So I hear Richard saying we'll plan. We actually are planning, and we have put money into planning. So for demographics in higher education, just in higher education, in 2000, for the 2020 budget, was 19 million extra. There was 74 million extra in the National Training Funding Fund levy, and then the Human Capital Initiative was 60 million euro and we have uh, we have said how we will spend that human capital initiative 60 million every year for the next five years so let me yeah. tell Doesn't you Cassell's there is a plan a year. yeah but Cassell's but I'm trying to say to you Cassell's has left out pieces that for example he didn't take in the income that should have been taken in under the internationalization piece for students. It's moved on actually since Mr. Peter Cassells did that report. Okay. There's now, and nobody, you like sorry. You have confidence in Cassells. No, I generally. have, but I, I'll tell you what, I'm not, um, what I don't like about Cassells. There's nothing about uh, apprenticeships, there's nothing about further education. You know, we need to hear their okay. voices, okay. their students' voices. At the table. I'm not sure that was Cassell's job, but anyway, uh, uh, well, I'm, I'm going to go back sorry, to the... Seam education no, is I'll seamless and yeah. students coming no. through no, want to make sure that, sorry, education is seamless and every student <clears throat> is important. It's not just the higher education I, I that's student. A, that's a very fair point. I don't yeah, well, Cassell's hasn't dealt okay, with Okay, Lorna that. Fitzpatrick from the, the USI, I think you have a question, Lorna, are you? Oh yeah, there you are, sorry. Thanks very much. Um, yeah, I suppose it's been referenced that it's the first time that the, the IUA, PIA and USI have came together calling for significant investment in higher education um, from the next government. And I suppose <coughs> it's, it's clear that the surplus in the National Training Fund is going to reach one billion um, by, by um, the end of the next year after, we, after all planned expenditure is made. Um, so I suppose we're looking for a commitment from, from you and from your party um, as to if you will um, invest part of that into higher education in 2020, 2021, um, and if, you, if you're willing to commit to that today. Okay, Thomas Byrne, uh, no, I don't think you, you were already, but Thomas Byrne, I'm going to come yeah, to well, you. Yeah, well, first of all, I mean, I think the, the government has used the National Training Fund to say that they're increasing funding in higher education, when in fact they, they've reduced core funding actually, and then made it up with the National Training Fund, so I think, I think they need to be kept completely yeah, but separate. Let's no, keep it's a really question. important point. Yeah, okay. a, this, this is a point because, you know, Mayor Michelle Connor has mentioned 60 and 74, 130 million, that, then they cut then the, the higher education. People need to look back at the, and the USI did highlight this, and I did as well, they've cut actually core funding. So core funding is the key piece. So we're saying 100 million extra per year, cumulative uh, to higher education. And we can't have further education as a kind of a second class uh, role for people. This is, this is my worry about further education, that we keep bringing it up as, an, uh, okay. as, as something to, to deny but people higher to education. Lorna's On question. the National Training Fund, yeah. uh, we've looked at that, and we've been disappointed by how that's worked. But there appear to be uh, European rules affecting the use of that fund that meant that we couldn't promise that in our manifesto. But what we've committed to do, doing is working with the European Commission to try to get that released, or try, uh, certainly to work within those rules. But we weren't able to make commitments uh, on that because of that. We felt that if we made them, people would say, oh no, you can't do that. And that's certainly what we've been told by the Department of Education. But sorry, just to be clear, if you can get if you can get the thumbs up from Europe on this, and I imagine, well, look, we've got some pretty creative people well, in the civil to, service. Well, I imagine that's okay. possible. Yeah, yeah. If if well, that clearance well, is coming, will you well, would I, you commit well, to using some of okay, that? We don't want to use all of it because obviously you need to keep the national no, training fund there for back. There's going to be one and a half billion there. No, no, but you should time. keep it. You know, a couple of hundred million perhaps. But Maybe. you need you yeah. need to you need to keep a large amount of it there 
for the, the lean days. So when the economy, if it, as, yeah, as but at the same lean, time, if if we're starving, I'm, you don't leave a huge amount in the bank for the no, rainy no, no. day. No, 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 you don't. But we're, you don't. But if unemployment starts going up or the economy goes down, then okay. you need to have that there to retrain people million, for new is that jobs. What you're saying? Or in fact, or in fact, for automation or whatever to retrain people to jobs. Two hundred million. I'm not saying that. What I'm, I'm saying, I'm I did saying, say that. Didn't I, I'm saying perhaps. <laughs> I'm saying okay. perhaps. Okay. But perhaps I'm saying that nobody million. can commit to that at the moment. Okay. Uh, and what we're saying is, you do need to keep some of it there. Right, and you cannot promise you this. Have your point. Uh, no, it's, no, it's, it's a positive well, the end of I'm actually going to agree with a little bit of that. That that. It is really important that we hold on to core funding. The Greens agreeing with Fianna Fáil. Yeah, well, about <laughs> core funding for higher education, absolutely do, be because I was teaching in Queen's at the time when the fees were introduced um, between 2010 and 2016, and I saw that process happen where they believed that they could access more funds by introducing fees and loans and all of that kind of stuff, but what actually happened is the government reduced core funding in response, and... and it really changed yeah. the atmosphere. Okay, so let's stick so, to the point here. But I, 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 I do take that point about the national training. What I would, what, what, what we would be interested in in that for is we believe that um, we should be looking at that to access things like apprenticeships. We would like to see more green apprenticeships. We need, we believe we need to uh, train up around twenty thousand people to do um, all of the the specific green jobs. That's at a cost of about forty million. Okay. Um, so for so those specific, yes? that is a yes. That is commitment yeah. for for specific one on projects. Two hundred million around that figure. Well, for our twenty thousand, we need forty million, but. Okay, yeah. all right. Uh, uh, Angus uh, and then Dominic on this, and then I might just come to you for a quick word, Minister. A a Angus. Yeah, thanks, Jane, and, and thanks for the question, Lorna. Um, so the National Training Fund is part of the broader strategy of <coughs> replacing government direct funding for higher education with other sources of income. Um, it originally started off with gradually increasing student fees in exchange for cutting back on the, on the core grants. That, inc that increased to getting rid of the postgraduate grant, introducing postgraduate fees. Uh, most uh, leaders of higher education institutions in the room would know that they are absolutely dependent on the, frankly, in absorbent fees they take from non-EU students here, like yourself, Nish, um, and the National Training Fund, which again is, is, is a levy on, on, on employers, which is money that is being taken instead of um, the, the grant. The problem with the NTF, okay. that's particularly pernicious, I'm okay. getting here, yeah. is that it, it, it's a large pot of funding in the corner that nobody's allowed to touch. So this urgently needs to be addressed. The one billion surplus is, is, is obviously undefensible. What we have proposed in the Social Democrats, now bear with me because our Just manifesto really, is coming really out really on quickly, Friday. Because yeah, we, 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 we do we want to get everybody else in, there's loads more questions. <laughs> Thanks. What we proposed in our, in our last alternative budget was 150 million just to, cap just to capital infrastructure in higher education, for example, as well as a 500 million, 500 per student reduction in the fee at undergraduate level to be replaced by direct funding. So that's what I can say. As I say, our manifesto doesn't come out. You're not Friday. committing a, a, in relation to that particular. Uh, I in would to the tune fund. in when we launch our manifesto on Friday. And you may be okay. pleasantly surprised. <laughs> Might there be something in that manifesto? You'll have to see. Okay, wait and see. <laughs> I don't know if I can wait that long. All right, uh, uh, Donica, you've been very patient there. Uh, what, what, yeah. what is Sinn Fein's take? Like, I mean, I think in in some respects with the National Training Fund, like I mean, there's the danger of letting the government off the hook for the lack of direct core exchequer investment in third level ah, education. Yeah, but there's a limited pot of money. Come on, we, let, let's just so, let's no, deal no, no. with this. Yeah, but I'm, yeah. I'm making it very clear that we would, and I said that in my open <laughs> statement, and I, I'm not sure if it registered, but we would commit 117 additional million in direct core funding to the third level sector. Okay. And that's in relation to uh, 27 to, to cover uh, in the demographics and the increased intake. 50, it's a great amount of money. It's probably not 40, enough, though. That's <laughs> nowhere near no, 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 it's no, not enough, no, though. No, but like, I mean, I, sorry, this is more than what's committed by Finnafoy, you're talking about 100. Well, 100 talking about per 100. year, yeah, 500. Likewise, we're talking about so that. 500 cumulative, it was cumulative. Yes, yeah. But that yeah. is a significantly in excess, in excess of what the IUA or CAS has done, okay. almost double in fact. Yeah, Don't well, like, I mean, as I say... You're, you're not keen on the National Training Fund on, on reading that? I, I, like, I mean, I think you have money. to take into account the fact that there is uh, <coughs> more people looking for apprenticeships than ever, yet the funding available... The funding five going, billion euros. It's a colossal sum of money. Would you leave me finish a point, please? Yeah. Yet the, the amount of funding available to for apprenticeships has actually fallen. And I think we need to deal with that. I, we are very ambitious in terms of apprenticeship. We want to increase the amount of apprenticeships up to about 60,000 per annum. National training fund is a key element of that. We need to okay. use uh, direct exchequer funding for uh, the third level education. Okay, thank you. Just one very brief point. Sorry, I'm going to make one point on the national training fund just on the surplus, and if there is any available. There is no building program at the moment in further education, none whatsoever. So there's a lot of colleges out there, a couple in my own area, but all around the country, for apprenticeships, for post-leaving set courses, aren't being built. And there will be call on the okay. National Training Fund for that. 
so it may not be available. Uh, Mr. Sorry, Sorry, number very one, there Ms. are PPP uh, agreements with all of our institutes of technology, and they're education. drawing down money. They are also further education, okay. delivering Honest. apprentices. But can I just go back to the National Training Fund? Please, please. Listen, we, we accessed that this year in the budget under the Human Capital Initiative to a, a maximum of 300 million over the next five years. So that's, that's been done. Yeah. And uh, again, I've had the meetings with the USI president, with TIA, with IUA on this. But what I will say, it is actually in the Fine Gael Manifesto that we will seek to continue to access that okay. funding under so the National million, Training Fund. Would you go higher than that? No, I'll like tell you, 60 million higher. every year. But first of all, number one is it's, it, the institutes are now um, applying for the, the grant. The, the rules are that there must be upskilling, there must be reskilling, because actually it's industry and business that have given the money. So that's number one. We want to see reform. We want to see uh, numbers being delivered. We want to see courses being delivered for the future of jobs. Okay. And we are, and right. sorry, it was in my department under my ministry that we accessed actually the National Training okay. Fund. All right. And can I just say yeah, the department yeah, are actually even working on that and as we speak. The question, well, well, I didn't no, I'm not going, Sorry, hold on. I'm come not back. going to go to every speaker and every question, okay? I will Fair balance time out Fair as much enough. as I possibly can, but we'll, we'll, be, we'll be bogged down to about three or four questions, and I do want to get through other questions. Andrew Parr, Thank Registrar you. of uh, IADT in Dunleary, uh, has a question. IADT. Yeah. Hi, good afternoon. Um, I'm delighted to hear that everybody agrees that higher education needs more funding, but there's only a limited number of places it can come from. So my question is, what do the panel believe is the appropriate balance between general taxation and a student charge? Okay. Um, I think we're getting to the meat of things now, because it's very easy for everyone to say, we need more funding. How you actually do that is difficult. Uh, Richard, you were very anxious to come in here. Do you want to answer that? I I was. Well, yeah. Absolutely no financial obstacles should be put in the way of anybody getting into education at any level. Uh, that is my opinion and the uh, inequality in access to higher education is shocking. I gave the facts earlier on about different areas in Dublin. It is utterly unacceptable. Um, <clears throat> so we need to remove all fees. We need to restore and increase uh, grants. Uh, and, and the balance uh, in terms of ta where, where the rest of it comes on, the other part of the equation. Where do you get the money? Very easily. I mean, it's, it's not rocket course, science. It's not easy. It is easy if you break from the neoliberal, low tax uh, uh, approach and the privatisation approach that has been pursued in this country, right? And just, I mean, it's not even radical socialism we're talking about here. It's about just bringing up public expenditure levels and taxes on wealth and capital to levels similar to those in Europe. And I re I'm going to keep repeating the point because Shane said he didn't hear a suggestion. I've just pointed out twice now, and I'll say it again for a third time, 700 million euro is going in a tax break for R&D to private corporations. And that, by the way, is not going to your small indigenous business. That is going to about 10 companies. Now, would you rather research and development funds go to the latest, I don't know, 15th upgrade of the Apple iPhone, or would you rather it went into blue sky research in universities uh, and into removing financial fee obstacles and so on to people accessing just to third clear, level education? It's a bit of a no-brainer. Sorry, just to be clear, and I'm asking a question here, uh, I, I don't know the answer. Are you saying there's absolutely no benefit from that, that, those tax breaks from R&D? Uh, I mean, those I, companies probably employ, what, about 60,000 people here, 70,000 people or something? I'm, that, I'm that is only one of the tax breaks they benefit right, from, companies. Shane, okay? That's one of the tax breaks. Yeah. I mean, if you want me to go into intra-group nope. transactions, I don't. That's, <laughs> that's, uh, which is called transfer pricing, that is costing the state in tax expenditures 11 billion euro a year, right? That's where one subsidiary of Apple lends money to another subsidiary and writes down profits as being a cost yeah. on their balance sheet, right? Okay. Which is just well, unbelievable. We're not here shocked. to rewrite international so, okay. tax law. So, so, uh, it's our tax law. Uh, yeah, it's not it's, international it's tax law, it's complex, our tax law. There are tax complex. breaks in our tax yeah. code. Okay, well, It would be an interesting uh, academic exercise to start yeah. rewriting international tax laws here. 
here, but uh, the academic, but back in the real well. world, uh, oh, looking at we closed uh, down the double looking, Irish thing. Looking at yes, Labour did that actually. We closed down the double Irish, and Labour abolished fees in 1996. Under massive pressure, abolished third level fees. The last truly radical intervention by a political party in the third level system, and on, you know, and that did have a desired effect of increasing access greatly. And everyone here has been has been very positive about increased access. Where do we get the funding from, and what should be the balance, Andrew? In answer to your question, well, Castle sets out the options very clearly. And the option we favour is option one, which is predominantly state-funded system. And that's an 80-20 balance, and as I'm sure you're, you'd be well aware. Uh, it's 80-20. The state currently so uh, you're, funds you're 64 So you're keeping the, uh, the, stu the student uh, fee? That no, we're abolishing the student registration okay. charge or fee. And well, we're going I, do, I do have to point out that... At that previous was election, Castles. Labour did also promise to abolish that. And it didn't we quite capped, work out. but we ensured it was capped. I mean, that was as much as we could do. Well, that was as much as we could do after Fianna Fáil had bankrupted the country. How long is that going to take? How long is going to take? No, 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 no. What we're saying, no, no. Okay, Thomas, uh, uh, I didn't Thomas, interrupt you. you. I didn't interrupt uh, you. Uh, let, let um, and can I just say this? In our manifesto, we have a reference to the National Training Fund, and we have reference, as I've said, to ensuring that we sufficient tax base to pay for the increased funding, the one billion over 15 years that Castle said is necessary to ensure that we avert the crisis in third level education. But even in option one, predominantly state funded, the Norwegian model, it's still only 80 20, and the 20% is made up from other sources, from other sources okay. beyond direct state subvention. It's not as, as costly, perhaps, as people assume because currently the state intervention is six, about 64 65% of third level okay, so come, we're come moving to the first. castles option well, one yeah i'd like to know in what time period are you moving to castles option one i mean that's that's the, the problem i have with everybody's advocating uh, free uh, um, higher education that's fine and it's very laudable and it's something we'd all like to do but nobody said, is it year one, is it year five of the next term of government, or is it some period into the future after that? It can be done with political will, and but we did it before time, in 1992. What time, what time frame? We did it in 1992 when Labour were in government then. And I think the reality yeah, is you could do it off. over the term of an ex government. What time? We saw the promises from Labour in 2011. Look, I mean, we need to ensure it, access. We, like we've seen, I mean, in terms of, I know what Ivana said with Labour, and we've seen a fall has done over the years. You know, we know what access, you've done over the years. Access to primary, <laughs> second level education free. Patrick Hillary set up the Institute of Technology, even Trinity College itself came into the state system, uh, through a state funding system, uh, through the relationship that Amy de Valera would have had with the province at the time. So we have a long history in that and we want to continue that. But we don't want to make promises that we can't keep. But we do want to set up a Department of Higher Education and give significant and needed uh, and, and, and cannot do without funding. Uh, okay. to the sector over the next five Ingus, years. Ingus and Whelan. Yeah, sorry, I, I just can't let that uh, Senator Batchel claim that uh, the Labour Party abolished tuition fees. Well, we did. In 1997, no, they didn't. 96. 150 pounds was the original student fee, 150 pounds. That, the current tuition fee of 3,000 euro is the great-great-grandson of that 150 pound fee. Absolutely. The fee was never entirely eliminated. We have never had free education in this country yet. Well, can I just say this? The free fees initiative introduced under Labour, and apologies, in 1996, was was a huge change. I mean, you're, you, Agus, you're too young, but I recall fees going up by 10% every year when I was in student so the 80s. When I was president <laughs> of Trinity Students' Union, we had huge marches and campaigns. Fees were astronomical, and the way they were paid for was people who could afford to do so took out tax covenants. The cost of the tax covenant, as anyone around in the 80s will recall, was so great, became so great to the state, and yet was closing off ed, 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 access to third level for students with disadvantaged backgrounds. That The Free Fees Initiative was a very, very positive development that wasn't hugely costly at the time and it was done at a time when you know the state was less prosperous than it is now and it was done because we believe in universal access yes the student registration okay. charge subsequently began to creep up and yes okay. under bankruptcy in 2011 we were for, it, it did go Fine. up okay, but we, we did that. cap it at three thousand. Well, it should now be it should now be about I, I want to go back to the uh, back to the audience uh, very briefly yeah look i mean whatever about the decision of minister neil van ockley i mean which i believe is welcome and That's i have right. no problem recognizing that but Thank it you. is the case that it was an absolutely brazen U-turn uh, at the time of the, la of the 2011 government to increase fees, uh, to increase fees substantially, and I believe it has contributed to significant obstacles to many students being able to access third level. Okay. I favour public funded uh, ed education. We've provided for not only for uh, additional funding, but we've also provided for the cost of eliminating uh, third level fees over the course of government, and the detail of that is in our manifesto. It can be done, and it is actually not that unusual across many European uh, jurisdictions, across the Nordic countries, uh, and in Scotland, it is entirely possible to have a well-funded, publicly funded education, third level education system. That's what we want to do. Okay. All right. Uh, let's go to the, uh, the centre of the country now for our next question. Uh, Kieran O'Cahan uh, at Lowen Institute of Technology. Are you here? I'm here. Hi, Kieran. Have, you have a question for our panel. Yeah, 
the uh, recent report by the HCA shows that we have a higher proportion of socially economically disadvantaged students within the Institute of Technology sector based on the high deprivation indices. And I'm wondering what uh, the parties will do in terms of trying to redress uh, that imbalance that's there for our students. Uh, Minister, do you accept that imbalances there? Do you accept well, that point? I, what I ex yes, I've seen figures actually. And, and first of all, thanks very much, Kieran O'Cahan. And if I can congratulate you for now going in with uh, you or Leinster or um, Limerick IT, and hopefully we will deliver a technological university in the middle. Uh, in Ireland, um, in the Midlands. So I, I thank you. Um, just to uh, answer your question, yes, the, we see, we know those statistics, and we are funding. We are funding. We have also in our manifesto talking about how we will increase the SUSE base for students to access SUSE grants. Um, I'd like to see more students in our institutes of technology. That is the reason why I have been driving forward that whole technological university model to ensure that students now will be able to access education in their own regions. They won't have to come to Dublin or Galway or Cork or, or to the cities, but you and, and you will be able to deliver in your region. So, you know, that will cut the expenses for students and also then it will provide secondary schools, um, you know, um, access for okay. their students into those That's technological hard, universities. Yeah, well, look, I think it's a kind of a key issue if we're serious about kind of social mobility and giving people all sorts of um, options and, and apprenticeships certainly are, are part of that. Um, we would like to see SUSE increase by around 10% and 27 million put towards those kind of access supports. And we really do see those as, as beginning, as I said, in, in the post-primary um, um, schooling that you know that there would be uh, options and made possible for people to, to think about where they where they, they might be headed in life um, but also I, I mean we have talked a lot about fees those are not the only barriers to um, uh, participating in higher education so again we're back to issues around um, disability around um, you know social stratification but also things like housing and transport so for example we would like to give um, free student transport for everybody in the country that would be 60 million Okay, all right, all right. Uh, no, actually, do you know what? I'm going to go back to you, and I will sorry, bring you in, because there's two questions on research. I'm going to take them together, because we're, we're kind of running out uh, of time a little bit. Uh, Sinead Reardon uh, of the Royal Irish Academy and Leonard Hobbs of the uh, Trinity Research and Innovation Group. Both of your questions, I think I'm right in saying, relate to research. Um, Sinead, are, are you here? Could we get your question? Yep. There you are, Sinead, thank you. How will you balance the need for investment in research priority areas with investment in blue skies research? Okay, uh, blue skies investment. Uh, how do you balance the research prioritisation investment with investment in Blue Skies Research? Uh, thanks for that, Sinead. Uh, Leonard, your question. Leonard Hobbs. Yeah, thanks for squeezing us in at the end there, Shane. It's a bit, a bit disappointing the research only gets to mention now. Um, but um, the research spend... Get to as many issues as we can. <laughs> you know, right if there's still, it's, as, it's as good now as at the start. Okay, the, 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 the research spend in, in Ireland has dropped over 20% in 10 years. Um, and, and as a percentage of our spend in, in overall GDP is dropping consistently which means we're falling down the league table and we're in a place now that we're uncompetitive relative to other, other countries, which is pretty serious when you consider the implications that might have. So the question then is what are we going to do about the, an increase in public spending in research, which is, which is as I said, has been dropping consistently now for, for over 10 years. Okay. Um, Ivana, we'll start with well, you. Thanks very much, Shane. Can, can we just try, we'll briefly, try and get through everything? Yeah, this very briefly. This relatively brief. Thank you. And I'm delighted the research question has come up. I mentioned the Irish Research Council, which does a huge amount with, I think, a budget of about 40 million. And really, to see an increase there would be hugely important. They fund research across all disciplines. Um, you know, I should confess that to having been a recipient of a small grant before from them. But that's the sort of uh, balance we need to see to ensure that we don't direct all our research funding to STEM subjects, important though they are. I spoke earlier about my critique or my concern about uh, the recent initiative, the Human Capital Initiative, that it seems to be too much oriented towards STEM, towards vocational, towards, in other words, feeding people into sectors where we've been in, into industry. We need to ensure better blue sky creativity research funding as well. In fact, the OECD has recently pointed out the need to ensure funding for research and education in arts and creative sectors. There's a great quote, uh, and Andreas Schleicher, who's the one of the experts from the OECD, who says,
says, the modern world doesn't reward you for what you know, but for what you can do with what you know. And arts, humanities and creative sectors produce and provide that sort of broader level education that we okay. need to see a lot funded well, alongside STEM subjects. Richard Boyvard. Um, yeah, well, our package, first of all, overall investment for next year is 439 uh, million, which, by the way, just to put it in context, is less than half a percent of our GDP uh, to put that much additional money into uh, education. But beyond that, uh, and but the two things are connected, we need to break the <coughs> marketization of, uh, of education and research generally. Uh, because if, you're, have an under, if you don't have enough public funding, then you're forced to go to billionaire philanthropists or to the pharmaceutical industry uh, and various others who will want to dictate what type of research you do and then ensure it gets the quickest return. And even some public research funding is linked to this. I remember when the <coughs> Science Foundation of Ireland Act was in the doll, I argued very, very strongly that the emphasis of that was pushing uh, the SFI and research funding towards essentially being dependent on the diktats of private for profit companies. We have to end that. Uh, 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 academics, researchers should not in any way be dictated to uh, by for profit and short term for profit interests most of the time in terms of the sort okay. of research they do. It will affect its quality in terms of healthcare. It may even affect uh, uh, public health okay, uh, okay. because often uh, the private for profit companies will be more interested in getting something on right. the market Richard, than actually having the best okay. based health research. Sorry to cut you off, but time is a little bit against us. Angus, I know I'll come to everyone on this. So, Angus? Uh, yeah, so we proposed before uh, increasing our, our research and development overall pot to 2.5% of, of GNP. Uh, GDP is a difficult uh, statistic in Ireland, as you know. Um, so, that has to include things like a significant extra investment in blue sky basic fundamental research. Uh, because very often the biggest breakthroughs, the things that we don't see coming, uh, and there are countless examples of them, come from fundamental research. And if I may, in this question, to, as, as way of making it up to Senator Batchik, agree with her in saying that we do also need to make sure that we don't leave the arts, humanities and social sciences behind. Exclusive investment in, in STEM or massively uh, skewed in favour of STEM is, is, is massively threatening. And again, we need only to look at... Uh, the reason people come here, the reason we have our tourists, the reason we have our international brand is largely due to okay. our arts, humanities and social sciences thus far, although science is, is growing in that regard. Okay, thanks for that. Uh, Dunica. Well, I think yes, absolutely. Like, I mean, there is certainly an issue that there is huge pressure uh, to invest in uh, research and development that relates to uh, STEM that could benefit business. Uh, and I think there absolutely has to be space created for, um, for blue sky research, okay. for, uh, for research that is... I suppose it has its own inherent value, uh, even aside from its benefit to business. The other point I want to make just in relation to research is uh, very often uh, as PhD candidates and postdoctoral researchers are on very low pay. Uh, their stipends are very, very low, uh, and the pay for postdoctoral researchers, as I say, okay. uh, very low, carrying an awful lot of water uh, in the university system, doing an awful lot of teaching and guidance, uh, and I think they're okay. probably not recognised right, properly for it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, Thomas Byrne. Yeah, um, I was going to get back at the Minister on some of the points you made previously, but I'd better answer this question first. Look, I mean, the Department of Higher Education will be the Department of Higher Education and Research, and that's to bring it more centrally into government, because quite frankly, it's in some other departments, not in the education, which is where it should be, which, but research should be in the Department of Higher Education, as we've been proposing, uh, not in the Department of Business. And that has moved to focus away uh, from basic research towards applied. They're all important. They have, to, they have to happen. We saw huge benefits of research in the, 19, in the 100, the, the centenaries, the 1916 War of Independence, massive amount of research, the academics having huge importance uh, in the public sphere, in public debate. That's what we want to go. We want to let academics lead this. And we are worried uh, by some of the trends in government where you see the National Development Plan uh, has you know, objectives in terms of research, very specific problems. We want to let academics and researchers uh, do the work and let us uh, you know, have that thinking and see where that thinking leads okay, us and, and, and to follow that. Can I just say, just in relation to what Minister O'Connor said about you know, uh, oh, people can stay in their local areas, you know, and, and that's fine if they're, if they're poor or whatever. And Minister McHugh said McHugh's last so summer, poor. Minister McHugh, well, disadvantaged areas. Uh, Minister McHugh said last summer that people could consider regional options. This harks back to that. Look, institutes, uh, regional, um, the, the technology universities are not, generally speaking, not going to be teaching medicine, not going to be teaching veterinary yeah, and other okay. subjects. Right, we have if you want to, your ambition should
it leads you where it leads you. And we cannot have this thing, that'll do you, or this will do you. All right, Minister, Minister on, on our well, We R&D. must have that on ambition and let everybody reach that Right, ambition. back to R&D. So the investment from the HEA for the higher education institutions was 230 million last year, and the uh, Research Council, 47 million. I absolutely, and I've met the research, I see, um, I see Jane Almer up there from the Research Council. I have met you, I've met the Irish University Association and indeed USI and Thea. I do believe that we need to rebalance the investment into uh, pure research and applied research. But that is not to say that we cut money from applied. What we need to do is put more money into pure research okay, because it's there that, that it's in the universities it's in our institutions Minister, where that blue sky thinking well, comes well, through very, very quickly i don't know if anyone has taken time to read the green party manifesto but it's actually not for the first five years it's for the next 10 years and one of the first things we say in it is that many of you who are in university now will be doing jobs in 10 or 20 years mm. that don't actually exist right now so we massively um support blue sky research um and uh, i think really what we need to do within the irish context is support staff and PhD students to give them the time. They're under such immense, immense pressure to do admin and to do research and to do teaching that we, we really need to fund staff um, to, you know, to take the time for, for both the applied and, and the blue sky. Okay, I want to finish uh, with you guys. Our second last question, it's a yes or no answer. Uh, Fianna Fáil's idea uh, for uh, a, t- a, minister, uh, a minister of higher education and research. Uh, sorry, a department, I was going to say. Not a, a minister. minister. No, 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 full cabinet. A full cabinet ministry for a higher education and research? Yes or no? no th- that's an unfair question, because I'll tell you why. <laughs> Who are you go- what department yeah. and what minister are you getting rid of? Because the constitution yeah. says you can only have 15 oh, yeah. ministers. So are you time. getting rid of agriculture? Are you getting rid of justice? Who are no, you getting I'm rid a, of, Thomas? Minister, minister I'll, I'll give you two. And uh, actually, uh, I'd love the were... job. I'd actually love the job, but yeah. I don't think it can happen because the constitution... Well, we changed ministries 15... the whole time. We didn't have a minister for children 10 years ago. Yeah, we but, what, but are we going to get rid of the Ministry of Children? Well, which one? Arguably, no, Thomas yes. needs to That's answer that. Thomas, well, which one well, are you getting rid of? Well, all of these things would be considered... Rural affairs, be considered justice, social... Actually, 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 I think that's really reductive. It would be more interesting to have the discussion on the basis of do we really want to disintegrate higher education yeah. from po- po- primary and post primary? I agree. I agree. I and think students, that's, I think that's, that's, I think that's really regressive. Right, I students. did ask for a yes or no. I haven't got a yes or no, no. from anyone yet. That's yeah. a no, Richard. I, I, to be honest, I'd be open to, to yes it, but no. you'd have to, you'd have, you can't just uh, on the hop because uh, Fianna Fáil come up with a suggestion, and just say, well, that's it. Well, it's not just on the hop. <laughs> Hang on, hold on, hold on. This is the the main opposition party who's ahead in the polls saying we're going to do this. Oh, well, well, listen, I tell you, if we followed everything Fianna Fáil told us to do, to we'd really be in the dire it's straits. It's, listen, be, we, it's, it's, a, li- it's a legitimate we, thing to ask. It's a legitimate yeah. thing to ask. But like, I mean, the idea that because you have. Somebody with a title that it solves all the problems. Like it didn't work no, for the Gu- it didn't work yeah. for the Gaelic in the past. It didn't work for the Department of Environment, and it didn't help us in those issues. Okay. Where are Angus, what, Angus? I mean, yes or no? It, I think maybe uh, <laughs> the Constitution does limit the cabinet to fifteen members. So, yeah. so Minister Mitchell Khan is right in that. But what I would say, it is critical to keep education with education and not do as has been done in the UK, among others, by putting education and research with business. Uh, and that's critical okay. that we keep it as right. education. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and can I say, I agree, I think we should keep education together because this is about the holistic picture. We can't tackle issues around diversity of access to yeah. third level exactly. without tackling educational disadvantage at preschool, primary and secondary yeah. level. That's something exactly. my colleague Aon Ariardon has been saying for years from his experience. I think he's right. So I would say, let's have a beefed up j- department of higher okay. education, absolutely. But I think education I, I requires the voice of the cabinet I, 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 I table. Look, higher that? education is already siloed within the Department of Education. There's own structure in there and what it needs is a Let's senior minister that. a senior yeah and that's how we strengthen it by having a senior minister sitting equally at the cabinet table okay. fighting for funding and because it's not working up to and now. sorry to where is funding. where is further education for where are apprenticeships it's not all about higher okay. education just to finish, we don't know where they are. We don't know where okay. apprentices yeah, are. You the know well yes. where they are. Sorry, John just Lanning. to finish, you guys, wiped them out. Jobs. We're out of time. Just to finish, I'm sorry for, uh, to those we didn't get to your questions, but I think we got through a lot. I'm just going to ask each of you to finish. I don't want you to speak for a minute. I'm just let's keep it tight. If if you were minister for education in in six weeks' time, first priority, what what do you want to do? And, and just 
uh, I suppose, a thought to leave everybody with today. Minister, I'll start with you. I want to make sure that, that students get the very best experience in our higher education, in our primary schools, and in our secondary schools, in our colleges of further education, and our, in our apprenticeships. And we should not be trying to silo it. We should not be looking for you know, uh, uh, different departments for further education. It needs now all to come through a department, and I really would like to see extra funding. And how okay. we'll do that is to make sure that we have a strong economy, we have people working, uh, we have a revenue base uh, okay. there, Minister and then we'll be able to pay for more services. And students well, first. Okay, Thomas well, my whole approach to higher education and further education is, is informed by my late father, who did his leaving cert. My mother didn't go to secondary school. But walking I by up to Grafton Street every Christmas, stopping outside this college, I want my kids to go here. He had that ambition for me, and I think that everybody should be able to have that ambition. Uh, for higher education to get through and access to as many as possible and to ensure uh, that the funding is there is what would be key for me as Minister for Higher, higher Education. Okay. I urge to look not only at Fianna Fáil's record over the decades in education, but in the last all term, in terms of which party has been consistently highlighting sure. issues okay. Ivana, at all Ivana levels of the educational sector. Two quick things. I'd first commit to implementing Castle's Option 1, predominantly state-funded system of third-level education, abolish student contribution, and in parallel with that, invest heavily in a state-funded childcare scheme for preschool education to try and tackle disadvantage at the root level, at the cause of it. And it's in the Labour Manifesto to do that alongside ensuring public okay. investment in public services. Donna Collier. I think, I suppose everyone should have the opportunity to have the best possible education they should have. It's a question I suppose I wanted to come back to earlier, but I suppose I can't just, but briefly, like I mean, it starts absolutely at, at early years and at primary level, uh, and I believe particularly we need to invest in Dash Band 2 uh, as well as Dash yeah. Band 1 in relation to that. But in relation to the third level sector, there's an awful lot of students out there struggling at the minute uh, to make ends meet. I would increase the maintenance grant uh, is the first budgetary investment I would make, as well as then increasing uh, the okay. uh, direct core funding to the third level sector. Yeah, NASA Harrigan? Yeah, I, I think the two things that, that I, I would want to take action on is inclusion. Um, and I do believe that that starts at, at a very, very early age. And, and I, it's not just about economic barriers, though they're certainly very important. Um, and quality. And I, and I think that that's a discussion that has to happen amongst students and staff, n not just students themselves. Um, and uh, I have seen um, a marked change in the sector in the last decade, um, and it, it's still time to, to reverse some of that change. Okay, which point there? Yeah, abolish all fees, uh, increase the grants, any uh, financial or other obstacles, remove them to access to third level education. End precarity for, pe for people working uh, in third level education, give them income and employment uh, security, and uh, bring education and arts funding, by the way, just to, to mention that, up to uh, European levels. Uh, we're, we're funding arts at 0.1% uh, as against a 0.6% in the rest of Europe for for one of our greatest assets, it's just shocking, okay. uh, the underfunding of the Thanks, arts. Thanks, Richard. Uh, Angus Owen Whelan, you the, the first word, you're going to have the last word. Thank you. The question was the first thing we'd do. It wasn't that, um, for me, it would have to be to take the HGA's National Access Plan, which deals with um, granting access to higher education equally across the, uh, in the entirety of society, and start working through that. Uh, specifically, what we have to do is we need to look at the way the SUSE grant is calculated, uh, and deal with that dramatically. The fact that all of Dublin, for example, is counted as adjacent to Maynooth under the, under, under the changes uh, in the 2011 government needs to be addressed immediately. But also, uh, the, financial imper the financial barriers to education are just one, and in many cases, not even the most important barrier for many people accessing education. Okay, I think everybody in the room will agree how important uh, third level education is. I, I personally think it's disappointing. It hasn't been a bigger part of the campaign. Uh, but look, I, we owe, I think, a huge appreciation to our seven uh, uh, speakers today. Uh, they should be out in the campaign trail. They're here talking about an issue they're passionate about. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. That's it.